All right, the title is uh, The Importance of God as Creator. And uh, to start things off, I, I really hope that uh, you've heard the phrase preaching to the choir. I hope that's what I'm doing today, that I'm preaching to the choir, that I'm telling you things you already know. Um, although that's a large part of what preachers do is to, to reiterate things that we, we know or should know or should be doing better. Uh, but at any rate, um, I'm hoping everyone does uh, uh, realize that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth and all the things that are in them. Um, however, uh, there may be somebody who's kind of on the fence about it. Um, they may consider themselves a believer, uh, but you know they're a little they're buying into some of the things the world has to say about uh, creation um, uh, the uh, I think that one of the worst things that's out there today is something that sounds good the idea of the uh, uh, what they call it, intelligent design or something like that or uh, where uh, it's basically evolution but God is is sitting there saying okay that's cool and uh, kind of a compromise thing and uh, uh, one thing I understand from Scripture is that God does not like compromises. Um, in fact, in Revelation, he, um, he tells the church at, at Laodicea, when he's talking to the seven churches, he says that you're not hot or cold. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And um, uh, so uh, it kind of almost says God would rather you have the courage to be his enemy than to uh, try to be, have your foot in both camps. And so that, uh, uh, that's another thing that's out there, contending for people's attention about, um, about things like uh, evolution and all that kind of stuff that we hear um, much too much of. Um, I don't want to sound overly dramatic uh, when I say this, but uh, from the start of this uh, sermon, these words I have to say, I do want to establish one idea in, 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 uh, in your mind right now, and, and, uh, and that is that, uh, the idea of God as creator, as the absolute creator of all things, is not an option. This is not something that we can say, well, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I believe this part of it, but I don't believe this part of it, and, uh, you know, this evolution thing, well, this, you know, how could this happen, and I don't understand that, and all that stuff. So I'm going to kind of uh, get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And that's just not the way that God deals with things. Uh, he, wants, he wants us to be all or nothing. He wants us to be in his camp, uh, 100%. Um, and one of the things that we see in, in Scripture is many, many, many references to God as the Creator. And this isn't just put in there to fill space and to get, you know, maybe uh, that God wanted to get a thousand words in one chapter and he only got 995. So he added a couple and it talked about creator. That's just not the way things are done. And it, this is uh, a, a, a really, to me, it's not a negotiable thing. It's absolute. And uh, we really want to uh, see God in this way. And... Um, one of the problems with all this is, and uh, I mean, it's not an innocent thing uh, to say, uh, you know, I, I really don't buy into this uh, biblical creation thing. Um, if, if we're going to uh, call ourselves Christians and, and be um, concerned with what the Bible has to say, we want to be 100% on board with, with Scripture. And so um, uh, we need to recognize Scripture and, of course, what's, what Scripture talks about in the way of creation. Uh, we need to, to, be, uh, uh, to see the Bible as 100% true, without exception, true. And... Uh, and we need to accept God's word as completely true um, or else what we have is a book with lies in it. If it's not the truth, it's a lie. 
You know, I mean, it's something, you know, some people don't like to look at the world in black and white. I kind of do. I'm not big on gray areas. Um, and I, uh, you know, it's either this is God's word or it isn't. It's the truth or it isn't. And we can't pick parts of it out like Thomas Jefferson did with his scissors Bible. He didn't like references to hell. So he cut them out of his Bible. I got a message for him. But God didn't like the editing he did, um, and he's not happy about it. And we're, this is not what we do. We want to buy into it completely. Um, the, the Bible is uh, uh, the most important book there is. It's the only book God has ever written. And that's how we need to look at it, as uh, the book that God has given us. This is the book that God has given us, and we need to uh, obey it. Um, Paul, uh, writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy, said this about Scripture. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become con convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture, not some scripture. All scripture is God breathed. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And this is, this is one of the things the Bible has to say about itself. Um, let me see where I am here. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, oh, I mentioned that there are a lot of references uh, to God as creator in Scripture. Um, uh, now, a lot of times it'll be at, kind of at the end of a sentence uh, or, or just as a kind of a, an introductory remark, you know, talking about God, who is the creator of all things. That, you know, just a, a quick reference to God. But there are verses, a number of verses actually, that uh, say a lot about God as creator. And of course, now let's guess where I'm going to go first. How about Genesis 1.1? Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.21. And so, uh, so God created the great creatures of the sea and everything, uh, and everything and moving thing with, uh, with which, um, I can't read my own handwriting, this is terrible with which water the water teams according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good. Genesis 1.27, God created man in his own image. Psalm 148.5, let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. How did God create things? He commanded it. He willed it into being. He willed it into being. Isaiah 42, 5. This is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, uh, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. Romans 1, 25. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. <laughs> um, I'll stop here. You get the idea, okay? You get the idea. And God didn't put these things here because they sounded nice. He put them there because they're the truth. And, this, that, and that he wanted us to believe these things. They were there for a purpose. I got some other verses here I'm going to read later, so don't mix them up with everything. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, why does God put such an emphasis on creation? Why does God put such an emphasis on himself as creator? It's pretty simple, really, when you think about it. Important things need repetition. Important things need repetition. When the Bible talks about something repeatedly, it's important. I mean, this isn't magic, you know, this is logic. The scripture is the most logical book I've ever read. This is logic when God talks. Think about your own life. 
What's important, you repeat. Do you ever teach a teenager to drive a car? <laughs> that's the brake, that's the gas. That's the brake, that's the, you can't say that enough. <laughs> Although my daughter drove my car into the building in which I worked one time. That's another story. She was so upset about it, I couldn't get upset, upset at her. But anyway, the important stuff bears repeating. You know, um, we're all not, I mean, we like to think we're pretty smart. Eh, I don't know, sometimes we're not. So we need repetition. Um, here's another reason why uh, God is so adamant about uh, creation. And it's kind of a, a roundabout reverse way, uh, to my way of thinking, of, a, of, of proving the importance of this. Uh, if, if it didn't really matter what you believed about creation, then why does Satan work so hard at undermining God? Why does he, he works overtime at undermining God. And I've often in Sunday school used the example of looking at, looking at Christianity, looking at our beliefs as a, as a brick wall. And every brick in that wall is important. And every brick on that, in that wall helps to support the other bricks. And when you start pulling bricks out of the wall, guess what? The wall eventually will collapse. And that's not what we want. And so, and so Satan is working overtime at trying to discredit God uh, as, uh, as the creator. Um, and unfortunately, he's having some success. He's having a lot of success, actually. Uh, if you like, I'm a, I like nature shows. I like to watch, you know, uh, lions and tigers and bears and running around and doing stuff. Um, I get a kick out of that. But I defy you to find some nature show that doesn't wedge in there something about evolution. They got it. It's like, I can't help myself. And they stick something about evolution. And so that's the part you see. What Barbara and I were up in uh, Niagara Falls recently, and one of the one of the venues you can go to is a thing called uh, the Fury of the Falls or something. It was kind of lame, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, I had one of these 360 screens, and you're and what you got to do? You basically, you got to watch a movie while they squirted you with water. That's what it came down, <laughs> down and that was like 14.95 each or something. <laughs> so anyway. And I, la I was laughing out loud when they were, I thought, here, I'm going to suck her on you. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, uh, but we're watching this thing, and of course, they got to get it now. Um, evolution, blah, 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 blah. See, once they say that, I just go click. I, I'm not listening to this nonsense. You know, do I, I pay good money. I don't want to be lied to. But, you know, I don't know. It seems like yeah, nobody got upset about it. Um, so anyway, this is, this is what we see. Um, uh, this evolutionary spin is put on everything. And uh, what, uh, what has happened in a lot of circles is that uh, uh, creation minus God has become the assumption in, in many instances. And you know, not just you know, nature shows, I mean books about nature, things like that. Um, uh, my wife is very interested in birding and stuff, but you, you know, uh, you pick up a book about her and they'll talk about, you know, some kind of evolutionary business about birds and, and things like this. So it's everywhere. Um, uh, the Christian view, and this is, I think, Satan, one of Satan's goals, the Christian view of things has been marginalized. You know what marginalized means? It means push to the side, push to the side to where it's not even something that's discussed. Now, I don't know if you saw a couple years ago, Bill Nye and Ken Ham. Bill Nye, the science guy. Ken Ham from uh, Ed. Answers in Genesis. Answers in Genesis. Answers in Genesis. Oh, I don't know why I'm hearing aids for decoration. <laughs> And they had a debate, and uh, and really, like a lot of these kind of debates, what it came down to was, 
If you're a creationist, you thought Cam Ham won. If you're a, an evolutionist, you thought Bill Nye won. But the cool part was, Bill Nye got a lot of heat from the scientific community. And you know why? Because isn't F, creationism's been marginalized. Why are we even talking about this, said all his friends in the scientific community. In other words, he gave validity, unwittingly, to creationism by arguing it with someone else. That's a great victory. You know, we need to be happy when we get a victory like that. And so, and the odd, you know what I find interesting too? Uh, 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 Barna, there's an organization called Barna that does a lot of uh, uh, canvassing of people, polling of people. They do religious polling. Just about every time they poll people, 50% or more of the people say they don't believe in evolution. They don't believe it. Now, they might not be totally on creationism, but they don't believe in evolution. Yet, here we still have this nonsense, and it's all over the place. And we can't get, you know, there's no end to it. And so, uh, uh, the thing that, that I want to impress on people is this. And this is something you'll hear from Ken Ham, too. Uh, and that's where I got it. That's how come I know you'll hear it from him, because that's where I got it. Um, when, when evolution is talked about, if, if you want to be honest about it, you must say the theory of evolution. It's a theory. It's not a fact. It's a theory. Okay? There's two kinds of science, basically. There is theoretical science, and there, I can't remember the exact word Ken Ham uses, but it's observational is, is a good way of saying it. There is science you can have theories about. We have theories about the creation. We have theories about black holes and all this kind of stuff out there in outer space and all that stuff. And these guys come up with the most cockamamie stuff because guess what? Nobody's going to say, how are you going to prove they're wrong? You know, they've got to say something for the money they're making. So, but you know, this is what people, this is what these guys, and nobody calls them on it. You know, we need to be people who call people. You know, I found a lot of times, if you get into a discussion with somebody, most people who believe in evolution don't even know what they're talking about. I know more about evolution, I bet, than most of the people that, that say they believe in evolution because it's so accepted by the, their, the community they exist in that they just assume this is the way it is. They're not used to being argued. Call them on it. Call them on it. Our, what we believe in has as much validity as anything. In fact, since we know it's the truth, it has all the validity. But, you know, we, we can't go and get in people's face too much about it. You don't want to win the argument and lose the person. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, uh, uh, the problem is uh, evolution is a theory. However, it's taught as a fact. And that's a shame. It's taught as a fact. And to, but, you know, people need to uh, say, time out. I don't buy it. This is not what I believe in. Um, the real fear that, that I think that Satan has, I'm going to try to wrap this up a little bit here if I can sort through my many papers. All right. Um, uh, Satan, I think, I'm not, I don't want to put words in uh, Satan's mouth or anything like this, but um, I don't think Satan would be, be so upset with the biblical account of creation, except there's a link between Jesus and creation. See, I think Satan's motto is anything but Christ. Anything but Christ. You, you want to be the, you want to believe in some weird philosophy as long as it's not Jesus he's cool with it you know anything but Jesus and then when we start getting close to Jesus Satan panics and then he, he doesn't like that that's what he doesn't like and so um, I found a couple of verses that um, that place Jesus and creation in the same stream of thought all right first Peter 1:20. He, meaning Jesus, was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. 
Revelation 13, 8. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. Now we're talking about a time, you know, a future uh, uh, time, uh, eschatology, what's the science, eschatology, talking about last times here. All whose names have not been written in the book of life uh, belonging to the Lamb, that's Jesus, that was slain from the creation of the world. So we're, Jesus is being placed in the same sentence, in the same stream of thought as creation. We can't have that. We can't have that. That, that, that's, that means that, um, that there's two true, well, Satan's not going to admit it, but there, there's two true statements we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus Christ. We're talking about, uh, about creation. They're linked. They're linked together. And so there's a couple things that w when we analyze this, uh, I came up with four things here just from those two verses, all right? Uh, Jesus was or Jesus existed before the creation. See, by talking about Jesus existing before, we're using the, the creation as kind of a landmark, uh, something that we uh, it, uh, uh, can use as a marker in time. It's not, there's not an exact date or something like that, but it's a marker before creation, after creation. Jesus existed before creation, and then uh, Jesus revealed now, after creation. He existed, but he wasn't revealed until, as the scripture talks about, last times. Now, last times are any time from, from the birth of Jesus on. We're living in last times the early church lived in last time. Okay, the third thing here uh, is uh, belief in Jesus will save you. And the last, the fourth thing I got here was um, that this was the plan all along. God didn't make it up as he went along. Oops, that Jewish thing didn't work. I'm going to have to figure something out. God knew from the start that his son was going to redeem the world from the start. And the word, the quote from Revelation says, from the creation of the world. And so not only uh, uh, was Jesus there, not only was salvation, the salvation plan from time, uh, eternity back, before, you know, before uh, uh, the time of the world and before everything else, uh, Jesus existed and Jesus, the idea of Jesus uh, saving us existed and it was not something that was the fallback plan B it's something that was always there always there and this is this is why I think Satan gets all shook up because uh, there's a connection there is a connection there and um, uh, I uh, a lot of times I'm going to try to wrap this up <laughs> Uh, people are holding calendars up out there. That's not a good sign. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, I have a, there's a favorite passage in Acts when Paul's in Athens and he's walking around the city and he's preaching. He goes to the synagogue, he preaches, he's talking, and uh, all the and Athens was a hotbed of intellectual thought and all the great minds and blah 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 were living there, and that's what it was. Blah blah blah. Most of it. And uh, they invite Paul to the Areopagus. This is like, you know, he's invited to Berkeley to give a speech among all the great minds of his time. And, uh, and so Paul, Paul never turned down a chance to talk, especially, you know. But what this is showing is God, just because you're in the company of people that consider themselves to be worldly wise and smart, the word of God is stronger. Paul, now, Paul was an educated man for his time, but mostly in the Jewish religion. But Paul was not afraid to stand up and talk to these guys. And when he, the things he has to say, he prefaces with a statement, and I'll read it to you. Now, remember, he stand, this is all the uh, Epicurean and Stoic philosophers, these people who think they're so smart. Who's heard of Epicurean and Stoic? They don't have a service on Sunday morning that I know of, and we still do, so they lost. Okay, 
He says, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And so Paul, he had an, some introductory remarks. But almost the first thing out of Paul's mouth, before he actually gets to talking about the nuts and bolts of Christianity is, he establishes the fact that God is a creator. God is a creator. God is a creator. We cannot miss that point. That is as that is a, as important as anything. I mean, the scripture certainly anything talking about salvation is very important. But we need, we don't want to weaken it by taking out things that are very important. <clears throat> Speaking of God as a creator and of the heavens and the earth and all that's in them. Uh, is, is giving God his rightful position. Not, we're not getting special credit for an extra credit for believing that God created. He wants us to believe it. We're expected to believe it. It's in Scripture. Um, everything was made by him, and salvation from Jesus was always God's plan. And so that's the way I'm seeing it. And, um, uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're not all here to give sermons and stuff like that. Um, but one thing we can do for sure is when we have an opportunity, as uh, uh, our, our friend and our original pastor Bob Hill used to say, uh, put in a good word for the Lord. You know, you want to just take it, and say a sentence. A sentence can be a sermon, believe me. A sentence can be a sermon, but let people know what you believe in. Okay, so um, let's pray. Father, thank you for. Uh, placing me where uh, where I am right now. 